Hey everybody, I'm the Linux Gamer, and I just played Bioshock Infinite. Bioshock Infinite is one of my favorite games of all time. I featured it on my Most Wanted Games for SteamOS list a few months back. Infinite is the latest in a long line of games from publisher 2K to see a Linux port. I believe their commitment to Linux and SteamOS deserve recognition. Bioshock Infinite was developed by the now defunct Irrational Games, and published for Linux March 19th, 2015. Without treading into spoiler territory, Bioshock Infinite tells the story of a private detective, Booker DeWitt, who is charged with finding Elizabeth, a mysterious young woman with special powers. He's sent to a city called Columbia, which floats above the clouds on Zeppelin-like machines. Columbia was founded by a charismatic, self-proclaimed prophet named Zachary Comstock, who has essentially deified the Founding Fathers and turned America into a religion. Elizabeth is Comstock's daughter, a miracle child and a symbol of his religious authority. You convince her to follow you by promising her a trip to Paris. Free from the seclusion her father has imposed upon her, you attempt to deliver Elizabeth to your debtors in New York. She's well-educated and particularly clever, and she quickly realizes you're not taking her to Paris. From there, the game winds its way through a brilliantly cunning plot, carefully utilizing the city of Columbia as a backdrop, a satirical and biting allegory that one rarely finds outside of science fiction. Ken Levine, writer and director of the game, has a particular fascination with deconstructing utopian ideologies, making no obscure allusion to Ayn Rand's objectivist libertarian philosophies in the original Bioshock. In Bioshock Infinite, Levine caricatures American exceptionalism in the city and society of Columbia, a racist, exploitative, xenophobic, ultranationalist theocracy. However, Levine backpedals in what could be described as a play for fairness, a seeming attempt to equally offend liberal sensibilities. He does so with the Vox Populi, an anarchic group of freedom fighters whose noble goal is usurped by a lust for power. While the rest of the game is strong and could mostly stand on its own without the story, the narrative itself is my favorite part of this title. Bioshock Infinite is one of the most beautiful games I've ever played. The music is epic, the setting is bright, and the city of Columbia seems, at first glance, like a gold-plated utopia. The buildings tower above you, gently floating against a bright blue sky, sunlight gleaming off every surface. Its residents are having conversations with each other, and you can eavesdrop on them. In the first level, you've arrived just at the time of festival. A parade blocks your path for a moment, providing texture and backstory. Music is an integral part of this game, including an impressive number of licensed songs. The anachronistic nature of some tracks really deepen the mystery of Columbia. Why is there a calliope covering Girls Just Wanna Have Fun at the beach? Why is there a barbershop quartet performing an a cappella version of the Beach Boys? Tears for Fears? Creedence Clearwater Revival? What is this? Without Elizabeth, this game would be totally different. She evolves visually throughout the game as the narrative progresses. Her voice acting, performed by Courtney Draper, is stellar and convincing. During the game, I felt like I was actually accompanied by someone, and when Elizabeth wasn't around, I felt lonely. Booker is a good character, however, the first-person perspective makes playing as a vocalized character slightly off-putting. What do I mean by this? Well, Master Chief really only has dialogue and cutscenes, whereas Nathan Drake is a guy who speaks all the time and you never really inhabit his skull. It's kind of weird to be put in the shoes of a fully realized character, where you have the ability to move him around but not control what he says. Bioshock Infinite is a narrative-driven first-person shooter. At your disposal are a wide array of steampunk-inspired weapons, but also a selection of super-powered vigors. The guns are self-explanatory. However, the vigors give you the ability to summon a murder of crows, endow you with pyrokinesis, or even lightning. There are eight vigors in total. My personal favorites are Bucking Bronco, which launches enemies into the air rendering them vulnerable, and Shock Jockey. In Bioshock 1, the inclusion of such power-ups were integral to the story. In Infinite, however, Vigors feel included for parody with its namesake. Although now that I'm thinking about it, the final combat sequence probably wouldn't be beatable without Vigors. Elizabeth is your companion for the majority of the campaign. Throughout the game, she'll find money, ammunition, and other useful items for you. She also has the ability to tear reality and bring objects from other dimensions into your own. Her companionship is core to the title's gameplay, and during portions when she's not around, you feel significantly disadvantaged. Infinite has a diverse cast of enemies. Unlike in the first Bioshock, where you're usually either fighting splicers or big daddies, Infinite has multiple common enemy types, mini-bosses, and bosses. 
In Bioshock 1, any shootout was an intense and claustrophobic affair. In Infinite, the world has skylines, which allows for greater mobility and affords for verticality in combat. I feel like skylines were chronically underused and could have played a more important role in the gameplay. You can play Bioshock Infinite with either a controller or a mouse and keyboard. During my first playthrough, I used the latter. However, for this review, I mostly used the gamepad. For me, the gunplay is not as engaging as the story. That fact, coupled with aim assist, makes playing the game with a controller tolerable. Bioshock Infinite features several pieces of DLC. Clash in the Clouds is a time trial-like shooting gallery, not a particularly strong entry in the game's downloadable catalog. As for Burial at Sea Parts 1 and 2, I'll make a review of those separate from this video as they feel like standalone content. Although Bioshock Infinite is not a native port, you wouldn't know it. For me, having played this game on Windows at the time of its initial release, the game performs comparably on Linux. The issue I had on my laptop with the games were squarely AMD's fault, as there's a serious bug in their proprietary driver. If you enjoy narrative-driven games, first-person shooters set in a steampunk or alternative history setting, or titles with compelling AI, you'll absolutely love Bioshock Infinite. It's a phenomenal game, among the greats. The Linux port, while it's not native, is fantastic. Bioshock Infinite gets a 5 out of 5. Have you played Bioshock Infinite? What do you think of it? Be sure to tell me in the comments or tweet at me at the Linux Gamer. Feel free to check out the rest of my channel, including my previous Lovely Planet review. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And be sure you subscribe to see more from me, the Linux Gamer. Thanks for watching.